Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today is a day for ducks again, but uh, we want to keep working on our trailer. It's time to put our wood deck on that we milled. So, let's play in the rain. Okay, so in September, I milled this white oak. We did a video about it, I'll link to it here. Uh, it's in the playlist about our trailer restore. So I milled this, I believe I milled this eight quarter, yeah, eight quarter by nine and a half. Probably was 10 when we started out. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking I was trying to mill a two by 10 was my idea in my mind. So a true two by 10, so four quarter by 10 uh, in September. So we've had a little bit of shrinkage. We're down to about nine and a half. This had been ricked outside, and by ricked, you know, little spacers in betwixt them, uh, so air could flow through, and had some stuff piled up on top of it to weigh it down, and also to try to keep water from pooling on top of it. So we did that in September. Here at the point of shooting this, it's middle of January. Uh, I brought this wood in about three weeks ago and put it here in the workshop, so uh, it, it reduced the moisture. But humidity's a little high in my workshop, concrete floor down here in the valley. Not the craziest, I fight that all the time with my tools. Um, but you know, getting it dried out a little bit more. So um, if I put a moisture meter on it, probably not going to be below 20%, but definitely the point where I think most of the shrinkage is taken care of. Before we go any further on this project, I'd like for y'all to comment. Um, I really need your feedback. Playing around with my sound, my audio, uh, I've always used a lav mic clip to me, either to my hat or to my coat. And I know, I, I know there's times that it's not as good or I, I rub against it or it pops or clicks because it's wireless. And you guys have given me feedback about, hey, the audio is not great then. But now I'm using a shotgun mic, fixed position on my camera. So distance obviously becomes an issue. Ambient noise becomes an issue. Let me know, honestly, please, what you think about this video quality. And then maybe go back and watch uh, last week's or you know, any of the videos where I'm wearing a lav mic. And just tell me honestly what you think. Uh, I've noticed my lab mic has a little bit of popping now and then. So let me, let me know what you think. And it may be that I have to start doing more closer up shots or do some B-roll of them after I've described things. So uh, feedback would be helpful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put these guys uh, one at a time up on my saw horses. I milled these 14 feet long. We only need 13 foot for the trailer. But we're also going to check to see if there's any, any warp, any... any um, Oh my goodness, what am I trying to say? Any bow in the uh, boards to see if we need to uh, do something about that. If we get a really bad bow, then I can put it back on the mill vertically and of course cut that out, but that reduces the width. My trailer needs 60 inches worth of boards and I've got seven here at nine and a half. So I should have enough, uh, but we'll see. So all three dimensions of my milled lumber are something I have to make a correction with uh, on the trailer. My tape measure here. Of course, you know, the length. I milled 14 foot boards and we have a 13 foot trailer. So of course we wanted to cut off any checking or just um, ends that weren't uh, square. The width, of course, we'll have to rip the final board down once we get it in place. And uh, the one thing is the thickness. Again, you, you heard me say four quarter you heard me say eight quarter thickness and the way these things are made with this little rail that holds it down in place is it's really only made to handle a one and a half inch thick board true one and a half or what would be a six quarter now the way these things work you know this this rail is welded you can see the weld spot there so that rail's welded and there's one in the back that that will be welded now i took that off when I sprayed the finish on it, I actually put it uh, put it away. I sprayed the finish, but put it on there. I sprayed the finish, but set it aside just in case. And I'm really debating whether or not to put that back in. Um, I'm not crazy about that configuration. If I ever want to change something real quick, then I'm, I'm cutting off welds and, of course, disrupting the finish. Uh, what I did on my big, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, well, it's way down there. My big white trailer is I didn't put that back on. I actually used... Uh, carriage bolts and put a horizontal board across and bolted down through the frame so the um, 
the wooden deck with a horizontal board, almost like a breadboard type thing, bolted down through the trailer frame. And I'm probably going to do that this time as well. I just like the functionality of that. It seems like I can I can take that off real easy if I need to take a board out if something needs to be replaced, drop another one in without having to cut welds and do all that kind of stuff. So uh, comment below if you think it's a bad idea, if you've run into something you don't like about that or think there's be some issue. Um, I don't drag, I don't scrape stuff out of the trailer. I don't plan on it. So it's not like that little, that raised board is gonna become an issue there. But I am still gonna notch the thickness of the boards here to fit on that first lip. So with this true eight quarter, again, cat's whisker under because of shrinkage, um, I'm going to, once I get these cut to the proper length, then I'm going to come in and I'm actually just going to cut, um, you know, just, just a notch or, you know, technically I guess that would be considered a rabbit. So just going to cut a small, so this will be a true one and a half inch, but only enough to get recessed into that groove. The rest of it will stay proud at the full uh, eight quarters. Alrighty, so uh, putting it on the uh, trailer as a test drive to see how it's going to, to lay. I see it, this one, this first one definitely has a little bit of a bow to it. Um, I'm going to look down here with the camera, see if it's going to, see if you can see that. So you can kind of see it's doing this deal right there. Obviously that makes that side hump. The grand scheme of things, obviously I could make it fit, because if everybody has that consistent bow to it, then we could play that, but obviously the last piece could end up looking like a banana. And, or I could just, you know, let the gaps run out and, and be what they are. But if there's any time I decide to try to haul some gravel or some smaller stuff on there, you know, put some sides on this, then I don't want those gaps being too great. I mean, they're, they're, I expect to have gaps, but I don't want them crazy wide where uh, we have a bunch of bigger stuff falling through or even walking on the deck and you know, your foot kind of stepping in and twisting a little bit. So I think what we'll do is uh, cut these, get them all ready to go on. Uh, so I got the length right. Now I just need to do my notch on my rabbit here at the front end and then uh, get them all cut to that way, get them cut to length and then take them all to the mill and just stand them up vertically, mill them all at once to get a pass. Now that means I'm going to lose some of my width, but since I have seven, seven at nine and a half, if I'm, if I'm doing my math right, that should be what, 63? Plus, should be 66, roughly, 65, 66 inches. So uh, we, may have, we may be able to shave off a little, but not a whole bunch. We'll see how that goes.
All right, so that's all seven boards wedged everywhere. Um, it's close to dark. We're going to, uh, we, I'm not going to uh, fire up the mill tonight. We'll do that tomorrow. It's not supposed to rain tomorrow, so that'll be nice to not do this in the rain. But uh, we'll look and see. Uh, as far as sealing this, you know, putting a finish on it would be nice just to seal it. Uh, I thought about doing just um, recycled oil. I do that on a lot of stuff that's outside. Um, I've got a lot of old finishes. I think this thing came over on the Mayflower. So a uh, can's almost rotted out. So I'm going to gently open it up and see if it has anything in it worth using. Probably stir all the mud off the bottom and the bottom will fall <laughs> It actually looks like it still has its consistency. Hmm. It's got a little bit of jelly feel to it, so we'll see. It, it may have kicked a little bit, so we'll. Uh, We'll see how it goes uh, tomorrow. Well, our rain turned into snow, but uh, that's just the way it goes around here. So Kelly's here. We're going to put these boards on our mill so I can get some of that warp out. There's a little bit of a bow in it. So we're going to cut some of that bow out and we're going to put, imagine if it's a frowny face, we're going to put, we're going to make it a frowny face on the mill. So we're going to put our curved side uh, down. So you can see the various degrees of bow. These boards are all the same thickness, but you can see some are a little bit more proud than others. And of course, see down here low, we're in the middle, they're not touching the bunks. They're touching the very ends on either side. So we're gonna take a little off, and of course try to be as conservative as possible is what we remove, so we'll have enough to finish the trailer. Now it's time for a dry fit to see how they line up.
<laughs> camera's freezing up all right so uh six boards what do we say nine and a quarter or nine and a half wide kelly nine and a half. yeah so nine and a half you see lit just a little bit of gap where i didn't cut out all the warp uh some of them are really nice and flush um some debating you know, do you do you take some of these back off rip them down more so you have a, a thicker fill-in piece or do i just go ahead and rip the two inch to be the fill-in right now i'm toying with the two inch because i hate to rip all the other boards down and like them nice and wide so i'm thinking one sacrificial board versus sacrificing other boards i've got a full board left so i could rip multiple two inch strips off of it if i needed to replace that over and over again and again when i put my breadboard down here that'll keep it from coming out and it's notched to fit in the top so i think i've talked myself into doing that you eyeballing me <laughs> I like it. Okay, I think I like the looks of that. We've got, uh, you can see some of these boards a little bit proud just because they got a little bit of cupping in them. So if I put that breadboard on there, that'll knock them all down <clears throat> to where they need to be. And what I've decided to do with finish, looking at that uh, polyurethane, that stain that I got out last night, uh, it's already started to kick a little bit. It's crystallized, so we're not going to use that. We're going to go old school um, reclaimed oil, recycled oil, and just oil this. That way it soaks all the way through. I get a nice, um, you know, complete, permeated board with oil, and that'll keep, uh, obviously, the bugs out of it and keep uh, the weather from rotting it out. Now. Some of you guys may be noticing the amount of weight that I've just added to this trailer is pretty substantial. Those are probably, what, 70 pounds a piece, Kelly, you think? Whoa, they're heavy. <laughs> yeah, so so we got uh, six boards, 70 pounds. That's 420 pounds we've just added to the trailer just in decking compared to if this had been pine two-by material. may not have been as heavy. You know, maybe 100 pounds, 150 pounds heavier. But uh, obviously it's going to dry out a little bit, but then when I put the oil on, it's going to soak up more. So uh, I'm fine with that. I just like a thicker, heavier, the oak. I think oak's gonna last a lot longer than uh, treated pine or even just regular pine for that matter. So uh, next I'm gonna put this uh, breadboard in and bolt it down. That way obviously the boards don't bounce off going down the road. So for my, my breadboard, I think I'm gonna use this, uh, an old piece of red oak that was once a uh, door casing. So that was the door entrance. It actually has the uh, striker hole cut there. But I'm just going to cut that down and lay that across the back of the trailer and uh, carriage bolt through that. It'll be nice and solid. Uh, it's actually got to finish on one end, but we'll finish this other side with oil and again treat it just the same. Get our measurements and we'll start cutting. All right, so my battery's about to freeze and shut down, but uh, I got my uh, breadboard or water skirt board, whatever you want to call it on there, uh, locked down, really nice uh, three carriage bolts, split washers, all that. So now I'm going to just put spent motor oil on it and doing it here in our sacrificial area of our gravel where I did the finish. I'm going to put a nice thick coat on it. I want it to liberally soak into the wood and probably even come back over the course of a couple days, even a couple weeks. 
Temperatures below freezing right now won't affect oil, but that's yet another reason why I didn't want to use an actual poly finish or anything. So I'm gonna put that on. If the battery stays in long enough, uh, you'll get to see the end of it. If not, I'll have to take a picture later. All right, take care, everybody.